guys, today I'm going to be going over command lines. And specifically, I'm going to go over Linux command lines. I'm going to go over what a shell is, what a prompt is, what is a command line in general. Somebody asked me recently, and I was like, oh, you know what? I never actually went over what a command line is. So I thought, you know, I should really go over it and explain to you. So when you type in a command, you actually have an idea of what's happening in the back on the shell. So go ahead and keep watching, and I'll explain all about it. And this is specifically for our Linux distributions, but do you keep watching? There's certain universal truths about command lines that you might still get something out of it. And some of these actually apply on Mac OS X. It has very similar um, command line features. So just keep watching. The first thing you want to do is open up a terminal window. You can do that by right clicking on the desktop and selecting terminal. This is a terminal right here. It gives you a login prompt. That prompt is a program that runs and interprets what you're saying. It is known as a shell, a Linux shell. Now you can see which shells are available by doing a cat on etc shells and it will present you with the available installed shells. Each shell has different attributes and uh, settings that allow a user to interact it, interact it with slightly different ways. All the commands that you can execute are relatively the same, but you're able to call up some system history slightly different maybe run a shell script slightly differently, your command line options for some more advanced while if conditions are slightly different. So, but all the binaries that you call that are installed on your system, all the commands you can run should be similar between all shells. It allows you an interaction with the system kernel. Now the kernel I'll go over a little bit later in a little bit more detail. Now if we take a look at our ETC shells file, we can see all the valid shells that are installed on this Linux system. This distribution of Linux is Mint, and if you can see, the most common shell that is currently used is Bash, the Born Again shell. That shell is based off of the SH shell. That was one of the original shells that developed when the Unix operating system was initially developed in AT&T Bell Labs. Now, most systems will have the born shell, which is shown as SA, and now the born again shell is becoming increasingly more common, especially among uh, Debian, Ubuntu, and Mint distributions. It has some easy user interaction that made it more popular, especially the ease of the history callback and especially the ease of um, certain key commands that I'm going to print out a little later, as well as it's uh, very similar to the Born shell, which has a lot of history and pre a lot of pre-programmed shell scripts that many administrators have developed. So you'll be able to find a lot of um, Born shells scripts on the internet to do, perform different tasks, but the Born Again shell is compatible with the Born shell, and because of that, it has gained a lot of popularity, along with the easier interaction between the born shell and the born again shell. If we take a look at the etc password file, you'd see all the shells listed for the users. Before any user shell can change, it has to be listed in the etc shells file before a user can be assigned a valid working shell into the password file. The password file, if you list, has all the born shells mostly listed but you can install a TC shell which is based off the C shell, which was historically a very common shell used in the past. It's based slightly off of the C programming language. It was developed after the initial born shell was developed. There's many ways you customize your born shell at login. For a system-wide customization in the etc password file, there's a bash.bashrc file that will run at login for all users whose default shell in the password file is listed as bash. Another file that you can edit at a user specific level within the user's home directory is dot profile and dot bash logout and you can also create an also a dot bash rc file. These are all hidden files. You do have to do an ls minus la to list hidden files. Now when you edit these files, you can do a lot of various things that you would like to done at system login. All right, a lot of people like to change their background color, the shell color. Here we can take a look at the pre-configured dot profile in a user's home directory that is installed by default when a user account is created. If 
you take a look, quick look, you see the system path is created, the shell prompt is done, and it searches for that dot bash rc file. You can go ahead and create one and add a very simple command, some of them that I list here. If you want to change your prompt, that's a very common thing to do in your bash rc file or dot profile. You could give yourself a welcome message. You could change your prompt. So instead of presenting the user and the path, you present maybe the date or a message to yourself. If you want to change your shell, here's a command chsh, change shell. It will prompt you for your user. And then you have to specify a valid shell. If the shell is not valid, it will prompt you with an error message. So if you notice here, I'm changing my shell from the born again shell to the born shell. Now I want to see if TC shell is installed. This used to be popular a few years ago. It's still commonly used. It's uh, based off C shell, which I said was based off the C programming language. But you can still install it. Pre-compiled binaries are available for all major distributions of Linux. Um, you could go ahead and do an app get install TC shell. Now if you notice how the shell prompt changes between the C shell and the TC shell, Give specific attention to the symbols at the prompt. If you notice the bash shell and the born shell also display the dollar symbol, whereas the C shell and the TC shell will have a prompt with a percent symbol at the end. This is a common um, depiction of what a prompt might look like and a quick way of telling between shell types. For a root user, you always see the hash symbol. Here are some fun control keys that I like to use. The up and down arrows are the most common to recall history. The control L to clear your screen. The control T to swap the last two characters. These are some just fun commands to know and they will come in very handy if you get in the habit of using them. To get a full listing of your command history, sometimes it's useful to take a look at your dot bash underscore history file in your home directory. It has all the commands you have done in the most recent history. It does it can date pretty far back, so it's actually very useful to see what you've done in the past. Thanks for watching guys. Let me know what your favorite shell is. I know it's Thanks for watching guys. I hope this was helpful. Let me know what your favorite shell is. I would love to know what you guys are thinking and I read all your comments. Leave it below. Otherwise I will see you guys next time. Bye!